What's up, everybody? It's Dank back again. It's been a little bit, but, you know, I'm back here now. <laughs> and I'm playing this game. It's called Chat... Cl chat... Reunion Classroom. Classroom... Reunion Chat. It, it'll be in the title, you'll, you'll see. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty tired right now, I just woke up. It's 3 a.m. We're just gonna play the game. Not ponder too much on the... I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Alright. Sometimes I wonder why they keep the convenience store open that long. Is what Amy's saying. Just like last night and the night before, barely any customers came. Whatever. As long as I get paid. Looks like it started raining right when I got home. Guess I was lucky. Can't open the window and let fresh air in without getting my laptop wet, though. <sighs> Alright. How should I kill time tonight? The big disadvantage of being awake when everyone else was asleep was that I had no one to chat with after getting home. Sometimes I'd play random games I'd find on the internet or watch some movie. Unproductive stuff. Which is probably a bad habit considering I still haven't figured out what direction I want to take my life in. Let me put on some music first. Sure hope that's not copyright. This is the perfect soundtrack for a chill, rainy night. Hmm? An email? Barely ever get any emails. Store manager. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. I, I don't want to turn the music off, it's a vibe, but, <laughs> you know, really, uh, questioning whether this is copyright or not. Uh, fuck it. <laughs> Wish it wasn't, like... Nope, that's just fully loud. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. Could try adding my own music. Hmm. The sound of rain's really nice. Like, fuck it. I'll just try and add some sounds after post. Uh, just <laughs> Hopefully, you guys get something in your ears other than my voice. I'll just have to bear this unfortunate silence. I barely ever get any emails. The store manager usually contacts me via SMS and my friends via full chat. Huh. It's an email by Blaze Marktree. I haven't heard that name in forever. Blaze is an old classmate of mine. He was the smartest in our grade. No, probably the whole school. He also, he also generally kept people at arm's length. I barely knew anything about him because of that. Why was he sending me an email? His mail was oddly formal for an invitation to a class reunion chat. The way Blaze had worded it made it seem more like a business opportunity. Either way, this sounded like a great idea. Only person I had kept in touch with since leaving school was my best friend Liv. Generally, I did enjoy my time at school, and most people in my class were pretty cool. I'd also love to know what they're currently doing. Maybe they could give me some ideas for my future. Alright, it's settled. Time to join the group chat. Not that anyone would be online at this time of night. Hmm. Seems like three other people aside from me have joined the chat so far. Blaze. Someone called Gigi, Hart, and someone called Mayak. Oh, Blaze is writing something. Seems like he is still awake after all. Hello, Amy. It's nice to see you here. You were the first to join this group chat aside from us three, who came up with the idea for this class reunion project. The purpose of this group chat is to catch up with our past classmates and reforge connections. Let us know if you have any questions or concerns. You're the only one I know who writes such long paragraphs in full chat. 
And wasn't all of that information already in your email? It never hurts to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Also, I would recommend spelling it E-mail, as it is a compound made up of the words electronic and mail. You don't write E-business or E-learning either, do you? Anyway, it's nice to meet you again, Amy. <laughs> this guy is a buzzkill, yeah. Do I type that out or can I say whatever? Oh, I can say whatever. What up? Peeps. Oh, that's <laughs> <it's> terrible. <laughs> okay, let's see if that works. Do I have to type that out? Oh, come on! <laughs> Give me a break. I want y'all to know it's really dark. Cool. Is this supposed to like make me feel interactive or something? I mean, something, I guess. <laughs> Is that it anyway? Oh no. <laughs> Do I just wait for a response or no? Okay, yeah, no, it's very deathly silent for me right now. What the fuck is Liv's picture? What is that? Oh, now I'm typing something again? Can I just skip that? Oh, I can, cool. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I have to admit that I'm not fully sure whose name belongs. Name belongs to who, though? Okay. But, uh... Yep. <laughs> nothing like watching paint dry. Uh... I'm just gonna keep waiting, I guess. Alright. You guys having a good day? Hope you are. It'll probably be a day when you see the... Man, maybe night. I post pretty late. I don't know. <laughs> Wow, okay. <laughs> Come on, fucking hurry up. Somebody respond. Say nice or something, I don't fucking know. What is going on? Am I bugging? What are you... Huh. I told you using your full name as your chat name, or at least your first name just like Amy, would make things a lot easier. Hmm. Hello, Blaze. Oh, if I click out here and it works, why is that? But GG sounds way cuter. It's a fair energy. Anyway, I'm Angie. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, fair. I don't think I've ever heard GG derived from Angie, but maybe you guys have. I mean, let me know in the comments. Have you ever seen anybody named Angie that goes by GG? We hung out one time, if you still remember. Yeah, she mentioned it, we did hang out once. We weren't particularly close, though. Angie was someone who got along with everyone in our class. And who was always surrounded by a bunch of other girls. It was the same when we went shopping. She invited me directly, and I wasn't sure how to decline. I initially assumed we would go with a few people. But we ended up going as a group of 15. Hanging out with so many people at once was a bit much. I didn't dislike Angie though. I think I'd genuinely enjoy hanging out with her one-on-one. -on -one. Hello? He's a bit shy, but he'll open up to you in no time. That's great, Mike. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> right. I don't think so. Okay, Mike. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let me let me read my part first. Hi, Mike. I'm not so sure. Or I'm not sure, but I don't think we interacted much during our time at school, did we? I don't think so. Think. Mike didn't have too big of a presence, so I'm not surprised that you don't remember him. Yeah. Only because he was shy though. He was really good at sports. 
he had been less timid, he would have likely been very popular. You three seem close. Were you friends back in school? I didn't remember seeing them hang out together. Kind of. It was Angie's fault. <laughs> Are you blaming her for hanging out? Don't make it sound like a bad thing, really. I noticed that Blaze and Mike always hang out alone. And so I bro Ooh, my words slurred. Hold on. <laughs> so I befriended them. We ended up hanging out frequently and our friendship lasted beyond school. I wasn't good at making friends. I probably would have been fine alone, but it was nice to have people I could share my thoughts with. Oh. It was, by the way, also, Angie's idea to create this great group reunion chat. Mike and I ended up being dragged into it. Angie tends to be pretty disorganized, so I figured they'd need me to handle the administrative side. And I guess reforging contacts, just in case they come in handy later, isn't a bad idea either. Very true, connections are important. I joined because I was hoping that I could get to know my classmates properly since I missed out on that when I was in school. I noticed that you became more outgoing recently. Mike, I think that's great. Okay, so what have y'all been up to? I'm just gonna shorten it, make it normal sounding. I'll start. This might come as a bit of a surprise, but I've been working in software development. This was a surprise indeed. Angie was always very open about herself and to anyone who would listen. But I had never heard of her being into tech. I personally think there was no reason to keep your love of her programming a secret back then, Angie. Yeah, it wasn't anything bad after all. Well, I thought it would make me seem weird or something. <laughs> Teehee. <sighs> GG. <laughs> well, my past suspicions are sometimes being conform confirmed, unfortunately. There were some colleagues and clients at my company that make snarky comments. They're just being poo-poo heads, don't mind them. Mike? 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 <laughs> are you Mike? Why do I feel like I saw Mike? Whatever. I'm just... Why'd you say that, Mike? <laughs> yeah, we know how skilled you are at what you do. Thanks, guys. Glad I was able to talk about my hobby with you two back then, at least. Oh, clicked it too many times, what the fuck? <laughs> was probably the reason why we got so close in the first place. Can you imagine my surprise, Amy? When Blaze came up to me out of the blue and told me he knew I was into programming? I totally thought he was about to blackmail me. Turns out he's just really smart and wanted to confirm his suspicions. Didn't make sense to keep it a secret from Blaze and Mike after that. So I just poured my heart out about all of the nerdy stuff I couldn't talk about with anybody else to them. Bit off topic, but that emoji you used gives me heartburn. <laughs> Yeah, it looks quite odd. I think it's cute. Okay. Anyway, you're next, Mike. You'll be surprised to hear what Mike's been up to. Actually, how about you guess first? I didn't know Mike at all, so I wasn't sure how I was supposed to guess his current job. Yeah, we don't know. All I knew about him was that he was into sports back in school. Something with sports. I knew you'd guess that. It's probably a bit of a weird jump from sports, but I work with animals. How the fuck would I have guessed that? I enjoyed sports in school, but I also really liked biology. I also always felt less awkward around animals than humans. Same. So I ended up studying zoology and became a keeper. Oh. That was great. Yeah, it's really fun. Oh, that's really cool, so you work at a zoo. Yeah, it's really fun. I actually forgot to account for that. I'd have to work with other people even when working at the zoo. But my coworkers are really cool. And thanks to them I became a bit more sociable. Which is why I hope I can maybe get to know my classmates properly now. Anyways, I probably wrote too much. Your your turn, Blaze. 
Blaze's story is probably more interesting. I see. My time has come then. I knew early on that I wanted to study and practice law. I figured it would be an adequate challenge and prove to be a fulfilling career path. After some research, I concluded that one of the best options for me was Yale University in the United States of America. It has a fairly low acceptance rate, but I wasn't too worried. Currently, I'm in my last semester. Do you have any further questions? That's great, buddy. What is America like? Where are we? <laughs> Where do we live? I thought we were in America. Well, it's hard to generalize, as this is a very big country, but... Oh, that sounds great. What's America like? Hard to generalize, because this is a very big country, but... What impressed me was the contrast between the big cities and the more rural areas of America. I also really like spending time at the parks. They're very pleasant. Forgot to ask earlier, but... Have you made friends there? I'd love to get to know them. Oh, shit. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. He's not replying. It's probably a reply in of itself. <sighs> Blaze did always have trouble making friends because of how unapproachable he made himself. <laughs> I don't need any friends in America. I can just hang out online with you. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. You know, Amy. Blaze may seem very unfriendly and pendentic. Pendentic? I don't... I've never heard that word. But he's actually very nice. He always helped me with anything. If I needed any help, and not just with studying, he's a bit of a tsundere. What is a tsundere? You know, someone who seems cold or harsh, but gets warm and kind as you get to know them. The one who says it's not like I like you or anything, bababaka. <laughs> I would never say that. I don't blame you, Blaze. I didn't want to say that either. It's the curse of having to read this. Sure. I wasn't following this conversation at all. Their replies just made me more confused. Anyway, what about you, Amy? What have you been doing? <sighs> yeah, nothing, nothing is interesting. Working at a convenience store to bridge time. Till I'm sure what I want to do long term. No worries, I'm sure you'll figure it out soon enough. Yeah, took me some time thinking to find out I wanted to be a keeper. There's no rush. I wouldn't recommend wasting too much time either, though. No, that's fair. But I guess there's nothing wrong with taking your time to make sure you choose the right career path for you. They were a bit of an odd bunch, but they all seemed like very nice people overall. They seemed great. Well, Blaze seemed a little stuck up, but I trust Angie and Mike's assessments of him. He seems cool. They knew him way longer than I did. My stomach is rumbling. My stomach hurt. Right, I still hadn't eaten any anything since coming home. What a silly bitch I am. You know, <laughs> let me go grab some food. Grub up real quick. Be yeah, okay. For a bit, I will make myself something to eat. See you in a bit. I should get something too. Be back in a bit. No, there's a thing. Let's see the food we got. The food we eating. Let's see the food. <laughs> oh, software developer, a zookeeper, and a lawyer. They all had chosen really interesting career paths. Can't help but feel bad about my lack thereof. I have no idea about programming and it seems too tough for me anyway, so I guess that wouldn't work for me. I'm allergic to animal hair, so... Like all animal hair? Is that a thing? It's like, normally, like, one type of animal, like, they're dandruff. Doesn't matter. Doesn't. So a zookeeper would likely be out of the question. Also not smart enough to become a lawyer. Huh. <sighs> what am I good at? Stocking shelves? Oh, well. I'll figure it out eventually. Maybe they can give me some tips later. For now, I'll warm up some leftover risotto. That should improve my health. My mood? <laughs> How late is it now? Hmm, 3 a.m. 
There's still some time until Liv wakes up. I wonder how well she remembers Angie, Blaze, and Mike. Now that I think about it, how come the three of them are still awake? Maybe I should ask them when I'm back in my laptop. Here we go, I'm back with food and renewed motivation. Hmm, are my headphones broken? Music sounds weird. Does it? Sounds the exact same, I don't... Oh well, I was planning on buying new ones, uh, soon anyway. Music is still listenable. Just sounds a bit distorted. I'll manage. Does it? Maybe it does it. Um, um, see, I want to have the music on. I wish they would have told me if that was copyright or not. <laughs> that way I could just be like, okay, cool. Now I don't have to add anything. Doesn't matter though. Doesn't matter. Let's we'll see what they've been chatting about while I was gone. Hmm. Apparently nothing. Probably have their own group chat. Right. I wanted to ask them how come they're still awake. I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hello again. Been wondering how come you're all still awake. It's still early evening in America, so it's a time zone difference in my case. I have tomorrow off and I usually like staying up late when I don't have to wake up early the next day. I also might have had too much coffee and can't sleep. I had a late shift at the zoo, currently transitioning to being a nightkeeper. Shift. That's an embarrassing typo. This is why I told you to double check your messages before sending them. I had a late shift. <laughs> I didn't even read that. What the fuck? Hung out with some of the owls, they're chill. I just completely ignored them. Not a fan of the scorpions though, there. Active at night and scurry around. Scorpions. It's the same for me, I also work the late shift and stay up for a few hours after getting home. Main reason why I stay up after my late shift is so I can chat with Liv before going to sleep. Liv gets up very early, so that is usually the best time to catch her online. Catch up with her online. She probably got Blaze's invitation as well. I assume she'll join us when she's awake. Hey, I have an idea. How about we tell each other an embarrassing secret? That way we can get to know each other better. What? Sounds like a dumb idea. <laughs> it does sound dumb. I'm not sure about this. I don't think I'd be able to come up with anything interesting. And I also didn't feel like sharing secrets with half strangers. Yeah, pretty valid. Did not read that in a book, but skipping too quick. Even if they are past classmates. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Please don't cry. Alright, if Mike thinks it's okay, uh, I guess I'll play along. <sighs> Gigi has them in the palm of her fucking hand. These emojis. <laughs> She's got them under a spell, I'm telling you. Like, <laughs> there's nothing, nothing we can do for these people. No worries, Amy. You can just pass or tell us something in general about yourself. We don't know you that well, so that'll be totally fine. Alright then. Sounds great. I guess I'll just tell them something random about myself rather than an actual secret. Alright, I'll go first since I proposed it. You already know about my love for programming when I was at school, so that's not much of a secret anymore. Instead, I'll tell you something else. Let me lower my mic here so you get my voice a bit better. <laughs> this is probably not something unnormal, but sometimes I feel jealous of other people. I guess I don't like this about myself because... I don't want to have negative thoughts about others. This especially happens when I'm people openly share things they're passionate about. Probably because I never got to talk about my hobby openly. Thanks for sharing. Don't worry, feeling jealous is normal. I agree. How you deal with these feelings is what's important. You go next, Blaze, I'm still thinking. Alright then, I'll share with you the worst day of my life. The absolute bottom of the fucking barrel. 
when it came down to me. When I was depressed, crying in the shower, sitting on the floor, eating corn chips. And they were wet because I was in the shower. Dramatic pause. I gotta see you once in grade school. Okay. <laughs> Please. Fucking hate this guy. <laughs> I guess, coming from Blaze, this is a big confession. You'll never understand my pain. Whatever, I'm next. Blaze and Angie already know, but it might be a surprise for you, Amy. When I was in school, I did sports and took care of what I ate. But since finishing school, I kind of abandoned sports, and am not as careful about eating healthy. So I've gained some weight. Meaning I don't look much how I used to. The keeper job is physically demanding, but not enough to level up my love for food. I don't think it's a real, really a problem as long as you, it de doesn't affect your health in a major way. Yeah, and there are definitely women out there who are into chubby but underneath muscular guys. Anyway, your turn, Amy. Like working at the zoo reminded me of something. It's not much of a secret though. Never be able to work at a zoo because of my animal hair allergy. But on top of that, I'm also allergic to iguanas. How do you even find out something like that? It's a long story. It's really not. You probably touched an iguana and then you were like, oh, I'm allergic. <laughs> so, love to hear about it when we meet in person for the reunion. Anyway, my turn again. Hmm. I guess I can tell you somewhat of a follow-up to my last admission. There was one time when I felt especially jealous. There was someone I knew who was into sprinting. She was really passionate about it, and it was the topic of most of our conversations. My attempts at changing the topic were usually unsuccessful. Hold on, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I heard the sprinting, but I have my sounds off, right? No, sounds are on. But, but why did I hear sprinting? Whatever. Like, flashback. We're usually unsuccessful. <laughs> she was really good at running and definitely would have become a successful athlete. It was a bit painful to listen to her speak about her hobbies so openly, while being reminded that I couldn't talk about my own. But I feigned a smile every time we talked and tried to not let it phase me. Eventually, I had to find a way to vent so I wouldn't explode, though. Well, I did something that I'm definitely not proud of. I ended up putting tags into her running shoes. Yo, Gigi, what the fuck? <laughs> That's messed up. Oh. Unexpected? I always saw Angie as a really kind person. I never expected her to resort to that. I guess everyone has their dark side. It seems like Angie was regretting it. I guess you do stupid stuff when you're younger. True. I assume it's my turn then. This time I'll recount something that might be more interesting to you. Don't forget to split up your messages so it's easier to read. Alright then, I'll try. When I was very young, I knew someone who went on my nerves more than anyone else. He was lazy, got bad grades, was vulgar, and overall an unpleasant person. And he always followed me around trying to befriend me no matter how much I declined until something happened on a school trip. We had to go hiking on a mountain, and I, being not very fit, hung back. And since the boy, to my detriment, wanted to hang out with me, he hung back as well. Kept passionately talking my ear off about something irrelevant. I don't remember what exactly. Well, he distracted himself so much, he slipped and toppled over the edge. He managed to grab a root that was protruding out of the cliffside. Apparently, due to shock, he wasn't able to cry out for help. All he could do was gasp in desperation. The teacher and the other kids ahead of us hadn't heard what had happened and kept walking on. There were several things I could have done at that moment. I could have grabbed his hand, or I could have cried out to the teacher. But I didn't do anything. All I could think of was, at that moment, how little would be lost if the boy were to disappear. And so I continued walking, pretending that I didn't notice. 
The boy was found dead at the foot of the mountain not too long after. The teacher shouldered the responsibility, and she was supposed to watch us. But I knew that I was at fault. I still remember his face when he mouthed for help without getting a single sound out. Tears in his eyes. That's heavy. Def a step from the story of you getting a C. Is this really something you should be openly sharing with me? This is very serious. I guess it wasn't like Blaze actively killed him when Blaze was still young, but that's a very extreme story. Alright, then my turn again. My secret is work related, so please don't tell anyone. I don't want to get fired. What the fuck is going on? We're just skipping past this? That's a huge bomb to drop, man. <laughs> that's a massive one. Sure, okay. Wasn't like I knew where he worked anyway, so I wonder if he should be telling me secrets that could cost him his job. I oftentimes stay late at the zoo after most of the others have left. The ones working the night shift usually don't notice. Sounds relatively harmless so far. I'd often skip dinner when staying at the zoo, so I'd get hungry at night. But eventually, the intrusive thoughts started. I'd start wondering what the animals at the zoo would taste like. Mike. No. Did you know that seals look chunky, but their meat has less than 2% fat? Also lots of protein? There are also indigenous people who eat parrots. Also heard of people eating tigers somewhere. Anyhow, these thoughts are troubling. I see the animals at the zoo as friends and family. And thinking about eating friends and family is troubling. It kinda weirded me out. The longer the secret sharing goes on, the more unsympathetic everyone seems. And the more uncomfortable I'm becoming. But I guess that's what happens when people start sharing their darkest secrets. Hmm. It's 4 a.m. already. Should go take a shower. Be gone for a bit. Alright, see you later. <laughs> so they just... <laughs> they weren't playing around with those darkest secrets. Just immediately went into it. Yeah, I watched a boy die, and watched the fucking light fade from his eyes as he fell down a cliff. I want to eat seals. <laughs> Put tacks in running shoes, like... What villainous shit is that? The more I think about it, the more I wonder if what they wrote is true. Angie bullied and physically hurt someone. Blaze let someone die. And Mike is thinking about eating the animals he works with. Those were pretty shocking stories. But would they be sharing them with an almost stranger like me? Are they playing a prank on me? Okay. That was nice. So, do I dare open the chat again? I suspect things have been pretty awkward after those confessions. Seems like no one has written any new messages since I left. Hey, Amy is back. How the fuck do you know that? Welcome back. Hello again. How could they tell I was back? How could you tell? GG. Full chat doesn't have any online away or offline indications. Alright. With Amy being back, how about we continue? I volunteer to go next. I'd like to share the aftermath of what I experienced on that trip. I trust you're familiar with the concept of natural selection. It's a term popularized by Charles Darwin. The term natural selection is also often sometimes used mockingly. Whenever someone hurts themselves while doing something unintelligent, sometimes said unintelligent actions even result in death. The boy's death I talked about might fit in that category. That got me thinking. What if instead of leaving it up to chance, you were to force said natural selection? Which would make it less natural, of course, but if I were to do that, I wouldn't choose the affected randomly. I would use myself as the standard measure and filter out 
the ones who were by a big margin inferior to me. I'd very likely be a good judge of a person's capabilities and whether they are justified in living. So I gave it a go and was pretty successful. I would research them, come up with a challenge and warn them of the consequences that await them if they were to fail. I thought up pretty clever consequences if I might add. Swimmers who didn't succeed drowned with their arms and feet tied. Singers got their vocal cords ripped out. Cooks were cooked alive. Despite the challenges being rather easy, in my opinion at least, few survived. The ones who did survive rose to new heights. Is this Jigsaw? We are you <laughs> fucking talking to Jigsaw right now. Do you know Buremi, that bowler who became famous for never missing a strike this year? There was also some commotion around him missing two fingers out of nowhere. You have me to thank for that. He was to have one of his fingers smashed to a pulp with a bowling ball for every strike he missed. He did unfortunately miss two. The first, because he didn't believe my threat. The second, because he was too afraid of what would happen the next time he'd miss. Quitting bowling wasn't an option, of course. He'd lose more than his fingers if he did that. Smash, smash, smash. Using a bowling ball was a bit inefficient, but it did get the point across. Nice. A bit brutal, but if it works, it works. What? What the f- What kind of twisted prank is this? I'll go next. This is something to do with the girl who loved running I told you about. But putting the tacks into her shoes wasn't the only thing I did. No matter what I did, she wouldn't give up on running. I tried everything. I put laxatives in her food before an important race. Spread nasty rumors about her, like how weird she smelled when she trained, because she sweated so much. Eventually, I found one permanent solution to this problem. I invited her to a secluded part of the school building where no one would bother us, and pushed her down the steps. She wasn't too badly hurt, she had only twisted her ankle. Fortunately, I had prepared a sledgehammer in advance. It was pretty heavy, but I managed to lift it and shattered her legs. I brought the hammer down over and over. I can still hear the crunching mixed with her screams. I loved the look on her face when she realized she'd never be able to run again. She of course tried to accuse me, but no one would believe her. There was no evidence and I was well liked by teachers and students. So she was called a liar who was jealous of me, probably just got into an accident and tried to frame me. That was when I got a taste for destroying other people's dreams. I felt similarly ecstatic when I stabbed the eardrums of a composer and peeled off the skin of a model. <laughs> I'm getting nostalgic. I can relate. True, very relatable. This was beyond being a bad prank. This was sick. Uh, let me tell you my story, alright. At the zoo, there was this penguin I was really close to. Hung out with him regularly and played lots with him. It was really cute. He's probably my closest friend aside from Angie and Blaze. He also seemed to like me back. None of the other keepers were as close to him as me. Whenever I entered his pen, he'd run right up to me. He was also sad when I had to leave. I'd have been very sad if anything ever happened to that penguin. One night, I stayed in the penguin's pen. He'd convinced me to sleep over. I was watching him sleep peacefully when the hunger came. And I did it. I killed him and ate him. Right then and there. Raw. I was crying. But he tasted so good. And I moved on to a tapir. Also one of my fucking best friends. And a tiger baby. I, I myself had help to deliver. I ate them all while crying. The sadder their death was, the better they tasted. Eventually, my curiosity transitioned from the animals to my co-workers. How sad would I be if I ate them? How tasty would they be? 
Alright, this is screwed up. Very screwed up. They all have disturbing imaginations and I want no f no part of it. Also, what is up with my headphones? I keep hearing these weird sounds. Alright. Oh, I just remembered, Amy, was this your address? What the... Why do you have this? I made sure to research everyone's address to be able to find a good meeting spot for the in-person event that most people would not object to. How about we visit Amy now that we're friends? Sounds like a great idea. It's a bit far away, as I'm in America. It might take me a few minutes. What? I've had enough. This is seriously creeping me out. There's no reason to keep talking to them while no other classmates have joined. Maybe we can make a new group chat without those three. Hmm? Message by Liv? I guess she's awake already. Hey, Amy. Hey, Liv. Have you received the group chat invite from Blaze? I'm planning a reunion, but they're being very weird. An invite? Can't say I got one. Didn't Blaze say he sent out an invite to all our past classmates? That's odd. Hey, this reminds me of an urban legend I read recently. It's about some scary group chat message stuff. Let me send you a link. And she goes around with those urban legends and occult stories. She really can't get enough of them. Not exactly in the mood for scary stories, but I'll humor live. Okay. Horrifying classroom. Horrifying chat room. Don't click their invitation. A rumor has been making its rounds recently. Some of our readers have reported getting scary group chat invitations from old acquaintances, distant family, and work colleagues. Don't click on the invite links to those chat invitations under any circumstances. Witnesses report speak. Witness reports speak of three different ghosts that can be encountered in said chat rooms. A gluttonous ghost that can't be satiated no matter how much it eats. A ghost filled with regret and jealousy that thrives off of destroying other people's happiness. A ghost that feels superior to everyone and wants to get rid of anyone that it sees is beneath it. These invitations usually appear at night and disappear the next day. If it doesn't disappear, then it's likely a legit invitation. If not, then you've been contacted by these ghosts. If you accept their invitation and keep chatting with them, they can enter your home. To avoid them, you need to ignore said invitation until it disappears. Again, don't click on any chat invite links that you receive at night. Someone sent a message into the group chat? We're here. We're here. We're here. Oh shit. Very grave mistake I seem to have made. <laughs> what the fuck? Interesting. Oh, that was a fun little game. But, mostly reading. Writing audio. Tim Reichert. Reichert. It's really too bad I couldn't get the music in there. It was pretty... It probably would have helped it a lot. I don't know. I could have read through it and saw if there was copyright. Uh, hard to say. Either way, I appreciate you guys coming by for this shorter video. Hope you guys have a good day, good night, good morning. Peace out.